Well, we all knew this day was going to come. It's here now. Let's fix this. So you've probably heard the news by now that this week, many top streamers on Twitch have been hit with DMCA takedown notices or copyright strikes for music that has been used and found in clips over the past few years. This is even worse for those of you that are creators that have been streaming for several years now and potentially have thousands of clips on their Twitch channel that could earn them a copyright strike. And Twitch, just like YouTube, have implemented a three strike system. So if you get three of these DMCA takedown requests on your channel, your whole channel can be permanently deleted. So deleting everything that you've worked so hard for. And this is happening right now to popular streamers who are getting multiple takedown notices from clips from three plus years ago. But fear not, you've come to the right place. I promise you by the end of this video, this will no longer be an issue because I don't only want to talk about what's going on on Twitch right now with these takedown notices, but I'm also gonna be covering six different places where you can find great legitimate music that you can use in your stream without fear of getting a copyright strike. And we'll also be covering some tools that will help you go through your backlog of clips and VODs to make sure that you have no offending items still on your Twitch channel. So let's waste no time, let's fix this. So let's start by talking about actually what is happening because I've seen a lot of misinformation on places like Twitter and I wanna help you guys have the best understanding that you can. Essentially two major record labels, rumored to be Universal and Warner Brothers, have started working with a company to sift through a collection of clips from popular streamers and file takedown notices when they have found copyrighted music from their artists. Copyrighted music is essentially any music that you don't own the rights to broadcast. So I've seen some people saying that they pay for Spotify or Amazon Music or YouTube Music or any platform like that, but that is simply not the same. If you pay for a subscription to Spotify, all that does is give you the license to be able to listen to that music on a personal device. It doesn't give you the rights to broadcast that music to other people across the internet. I've also seen a lot of people raising their pitchforks at Twitch, asking them why they're issuing all of these copyright strikes right now. But really, Twitch isn't at fault here. It's kind of taken out of their hands. Sure, there's plenty that Twitch could have done because the writing has been on the wall about this happening for the platform for a number of years now. But in terms of actually what's happening with these DMCA takedown notices and then a copyright strike, Twitch really isn't at fault. Like pretty much every other platform out there, Twitch makes use of something called Safe Harbor, which is built into DMCA, which essentially states that they are not responsible for the copyright infringement of users on their platform. But to be able to be protected by Safe Harbor, they have to follow a few different guidelines. Number one, they must have a system in place for takedown notices to be issued. Number two, they must follow through with legitimate takedown requests and actually remove the offending material. And then number three, they must have a system in place that prevents repeat offenders. So what can you do as a streamer on Twitch to protect yourself from these copyright strikes and potentially losing your channel? Well, it really is as simple as stop using copyrighted music. It's gotten to the point now where Twitch is no longer a niche little website on the internet. People know about it, certainly now the record labels know about it, and they're coming to make sure that you're not using their content on your stream. If you think that the current situation is bad, I promise you it is only going to get worse. We've actually heard from Noah Downs, who is a lawyer specializing in intellectual property law, that these companies are also monitoring live streams as they happen for copyright infringement and are likely to act on that at some point too with takedown notices. It is Warner, and so Universal Music Group and Warner have invested in this company that's monitoring every stream on Twitch. And they have the ability to issue live DMCAs, they just haven't done it yet. And so it's super important uh, to note that that level of enforcement hasn't even come through yet, um, where you're live and you're getting taken down live for playing music. Right now we're just seeing clips and bots. So the simplest way for this to no longer be a problem for you is to stop using copyrighted music. I know that it sucks. I completely sympathize with you because it's been fine for years, but really this is a problem that is only going to get worse now. But the good news is that there are plenty of legitimate places where you can find music that you can use on stream legally and not get issued with one of these strikes. I've put together a list of six different places with huge libraries of music that you guys can use in your Twitch streams, some of which are free, some of which are paid. Twitch actually used to have a free library of music that you could use on your live streams, but upon researching this video, I found that they no longer support it, and the only way I could find the website was to use the internet archive to go back in time to see what it originally looked like. Uh, I'm not really sure why that's disappeared and why it's been removed, but anyway, I've still got six great places where you guys can go to get music for your live streams. So starting off with free places that you can get music for your live streams, uh, we'll kick things off with the internet classic, which is no copyright sounds. If you're looking for electronic music, no copyright 
Sounds has been a staple on the internet since 2011. They've got hundreds of artists, thousands of tracks, and are incredibly popular, especially in the YouTube community, as a place to go for copyright-free music. You can use any of their music on Twitch. All that they ask is that you add a credit to them by adding a link in your stream description. Next, we have our resident stream doctor, Harris Heller, who has been releasing music under the name Stream Beats for the last few months. These are more instrumental and ambient tracks, perfect for filling the background of your streams, leaving plenty of room for your own voice to chat over the top. Right now, as I'm recording this, Stream Beats is a collection of about 200 tracks, but as I said, Harris is adding more as time goes on, so this library is only gonna get bigger. Next, we have Incompitech, which is a website with around 2,000 different tracks that have all been created by musician Kevin Macle Macleod. Macleod. I don't know how you say your name, Kevin, but thank you very much for the free music. In the 2,000 tracks, there's a variety of different genres, and as long as you are crediting the website and the creator, then you're free to use this music in your streams. Next, we have Pretzel Rocks, which is a platform that has been built for live streaming only. They have two different tiers, a free tier, which just requires that you use their chat bot in your stream, and that posts info about each new song that plays, and then they have a premium tier, which is at $5 per month, and that just removes the requirement for the chat attribution. Pretzel Rocks has a pretty impressive library covering various different genres, uh, around 10,000 different tracks. So $5 a month for their paid version or free if you want to use the chat attribution. So now moving fully into the paid tier, we have the ever popular Monster Cat, which is an electronic music label, which has been very popular with creators since 2011. Similar to No Copyright Sounds, their library is mainly electronic music, but it does boast an impressive collection of artists. To be able to stream and use their music claim free, you need to have their gold tier which costs $5 per month. Like I said, it's mainly electronic music, but if that takes your fancy, there is an impressive number of tracks and really quite a good roster of different artists. Finally, we have Epidemic Sound, who I have been using on both my Twitch channel and my YouTube videos for the last three years. They have a huge library of music with over 32,000 tracks and loads of sound effects as well in pretty much every genre you can imagine. And they've already got hundreds of playlists set up so you don't need to spend time searching for the tracks to fit your mood. You can use their music without issues on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, in your podcasts. And they've got a really unique feature called Stems which allows you to download individual parts of a song which I use all the time for my YouTube videos as it allows me to make a song completely instrumental by downloading all of the instruments and leaving out the vocals. They're a little bit more expensive at $15 per month, but with the amount of choice that you have from their huge library and the range of different places that you can then use that music, Honestly, they are one of my top recommendations if you can afford them. They often do deals around Black Friday sort of time, which I've mentioned before in my videos. So with this whole DMCA takedown thing on Twitch, I reached out to them to see if they could sort you guys out with a deal. Thankfully, they were really sympathetic with what's going on and they have arranged a extended deal for you guys. So what you can do is you can get 30 days free use of their library. You can see all of the tracks, use them in your Twitch streams, use them in your YouTube videos. And then after that, if you wish to continue your subscription, you're gonna get 50% off for the second and third month. So one free month, 50% off for months two and three. All you have to do is use the link down in the description along with gaming careers at checkout. They've not sponsored this video or paid me to say any of this. It's just who I use and I thought I would reach out to them to see if I could get you guys a discount as well. Okay, so that is now combined six different places that I've given you guys where you can go and find royalty-free music or music that you can get with a license so you can stream on Twitch completely legally using this music without fear of getting a DMCA takedown request or a copyright strike. But what about all of those VODs and clips that you've got on your stream from the previous years that might have some copyrighted music inside? Well, in this panic, thankfully, the community has come to the rescue and a couple of members of the Twitch community have actually built tools overnight, really, to be able to download and delete any offending clips from your Twitch account. I will preface this by saying that these have been built very quickly, so they're not by any means full finished products. Uh, they really require a little bit of tinkering to get working. I'm gonna take you through one of them on my computer right now, which allows you to actually download all of your Twitch clips and delete them from your account, really removing the risk of getting any kind of takedown request. Also, it's worth mentioning that Twitch have announced that they're working on something as a top priority to help streamers that have thousands of clips in their backlog um, to help them remove their offending content from their channel. but. Judging by the fact that Twitch have had so long to prepare for this moment, really with the writing being on the wall, I wouldn't hold my breath. And the safest thing to do is unfortunately to remove any of ending content from your Twitch channel. Okay, so the tool that we're gonna be using to download and then remove our clips from Twitch has been developed by a guy called Dane Fairbanks over on Twitter. Uh, so big shout out to him. I think he literally built it overnight when the news came out. 
Um, I will leave a link to the GitHub, which is actually where you download the program uh, in the description down below. Uh, but there's a th one thing that you need to do before you can actually use the program, and that's to get your auth token from Twitch. So uh, this is a private thing. You don't want to be posting this anywhere, but to be able to access your auth token, you want to go over to the Twitch website, make sure you're logged in. And then if you're on Chrome, press F12 to bring up the console. Make sure you're on the console tab up here and then copy and paste in that code, which will be cookies and then auth token. And then below it, you should see your auth token pasted. I'm going to blur mine out, obviously, because they're like passwords. You shouldn't share them with anyone. But it'll be a long string of digits and numbers. And you're going to need that to actually uh, use the program. Back over on the GitHub page, you want to head down to the bottom and download here the legacy version. He has updated already since scripting the video with a couple of experimental versions here, tr probably trying to fix some bugs that people are having. I've had no issues just with the legacy version, so that's one I'll recommend. But obviously, if you are having issues, come back here and see if either of these other versions will work. Like I said, <laughs> he's built this overnight. There's going to be some issues and probably a lot of people are downloading this to make sure they're not going to get any strikes for old clips. Once that's finished downloading, you can unzip it somewhere. I'm going to do it to my desktop. I'm then going to run the program, paste in my auth token that I took from Twitch. Next, you'll be given an option to choose which type of clips you want to download and potentially delete. The clips that you have taken, so clips on your channel and clips on other people's channel that you have taken yourself, or clips just on your channel that other people have taken. So I'd recommend choosing number two for the purposes of this video. Uh, you then get the option as to whether or not you want to download them. Obviously, if you want to have these memories saved, then yes, I would recommend downloading them. And then secondly, you get the option as to whether you want to delete them from Twitch. Now, this is completely up to you. If you're following this video, you probably are wanting to delete them. Like I said before, I've been using Epidemic Sounds for the last three years now, so I don't actually want to delete any of the clips from my channel. So I'm going to choose no, uh, but if you do want to remove them, you want to choose yes here. Once you click that, you can see now we are going through all of the different clips that people have taken you can see the title of the clip who actually made the clip um, as well as a bit of other information and then in the folder where the program is running you can see we have a downloads folder and this is actually where all the downloaded clips are going to save so it does take a few seconds per clip as you can see and if you have thousands of clips this is going to take a long time you're probably going to need to leave it going overnight but this is the situation that we've been left in now although i said that twitch weren't necessarily to blame for what is happening right now with the takedown and the strikes um, i do think that they could have prepared much better because they have definitely known that this is a situation they were going to be facing probably for at least five years now because they're sort of five years behind what happened on youtube when this first started happening on youtube and there's things that they definitely should have got in place by now one thing that I would really like to see is them implement some kind of system with Amazon Music because we've seen these Twitch watch parties, I think is what they're called, where people can now stream shows that are on Amazon Prime and watch them with their audience. And obviously that benefits both Amazon Prime as well as the Twitch streamer. And it'd be great if they could sort out some kind of relationship with the music labels uh, where they can also stream Amazon Music if you're streaming on Twitch. Uh, that would be real beneficial, but that's not something they're going to be able to arrange in a short period of time. So I hope they're already working on that. In the meantime, I'd love for them to have ways for you to be able to search through your clips and find moments where they've detected uh, copyrighted music because they definitely have that system in place for VODs where they automatically mute your VOD. Uh, they just need to bring something across to clips so that they can tell streamers we've noticed some copyrighted material in this clip. Would you like to delete it? Anyway, I hope that this video has been helpful. I realize it's been a bit long, but I wanted to cover what's going on, what you should do about it in the future going forward, and what you should do about it, about your clips from the past. So hopefully this has helped you and you haven't got any strikes coming to your channel. Uh, I do really just want to reiterate that you should be streaming music that you have licenses to. Don't stream copyrighted content anymore. They know about Twitch and it's just going to get worse and worse and the rules are going to get more and more strict. So uh, I hope you have a good stream and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.